Hi, my name is Brooke Myers and I'm a behavior analyst who supports students with autism. I'm here today with Dilshan Jayasinghe, who is a very successful university student and he also happens to have autism. So Dilshan is here today to tell us a little bit more about what it's like going through school, having autism, and tell us a little bit about self-advocacy and self-determination. So tell me a little bit more about yourself. Well, thank you. So I'm a student with autism, or known as autism spectrum disorder. I live in Mississauga, Ontario, currently living with my parents, my mom and my dad, and my older brother. So I just finished my first year at the University of Guelph Palmer Bachelor Business Administration program, and I'm currently a campus leader and a start leader, which stands for Student Transition and Resource Team Leader, which is basically the leaders that attend different events for transition students and prospective students. Wow, so that's pretty cool. Quite the leadership role. Yeah, yeah. I've and been it, doing it since, since high school. Wow, so you really like helping out. Yes, yeah. one of my biggest hobbies is volunteering. Last year, which last summer break, which was one of my biggest highlights of summer 2015, was volunteering at the Toronto 2015 Pan Am and Pair Pan Am Games. Like, honestly, I had the, in my opinion, was the best position ever, which is being in the ceremonies crew parade volunteer. Wow, very interesting. So what are some other things that you're really good at? Another thing I'm really good at is memorizing things. So one special ability I have, which I was told, or I believe is because of my autism, is having a really good memory. Like when I watch things, read things, or experience things that is memorable, happy, sad, or enjoyable, something significant, I tend to remember them by heart. For example, watching movies a couple of times and some of my favorite scenes, I would like know it by heart. Wow. So what do you want to do when you grow up? I have four path four choices for careers. My first choice is being in, being an accountant, basically in the field of accounting, pursuing my CPA designation, which is Chartered Professional Accountant. My second choice is in the field of finance, being a a certified financial planner because when I was in grade 12, I took a personal finance course which was taught by my business teacher who was a former bank manager at TD. So oh. our assignment, so what we basically learned is what a financial planner would know. And our culminating task was doing, was doing financial planning for our relatives or our family members, education or retirement. So because I enjoyed that assignment so much, I thought maybe finance would be my second choice. And my third and fourth choice would be in the field of education. The third choice is being a high school business teacher. And my fourth choice, which my parents told me, since I love my university so much, which is the University of Guelph Humber, maybe work for the university with the student life department, as most of the staff members at Guelph Humber, who works at student life, student financial services, student recruitment admissions, they were former students at Guelph Humber back then. Those sound like great career opportunities for you. So given that autism is a spectrum disorder and varies from one person to the next, how would you describe your autism to someone else? Well, my autism falls under the high functioning side. And as mentioned before, my special ability would be having a really good memory. Like I tend to remember a lot of things through experience, learning, or from what I'm reading or from what I'm watching. If I read it multiple times or experience one significant event that I really enjoy so much. And there are many occasions that I really don't like surprises, that I love to be prepared when, for any event or any occasion. One. <laughs> so you have a really good memory and you like to be very prepared, you don't like surprises. Anything else? Yes. Well, for group assignments, it really bothers me when, when I'm in a group and there's some students who don't like to do, who don't like or don't do their part at all, that sometimes Whenever the students don't do their part of the assignment, it makes it freaks me out or makes me worry that I won't be able to do well and get a low mark because of those students. So sometimes I don't like working with groups that I prefer working alone because I know for that I know for a fact this is my work, this is my my effort that I'll be able to do well because of what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. So anything else that makes you your autism different from mm -hmm. Yes, there's another thing that I usually have a sense of being really sensitive and really caring. Like, for there's different occasions where I'm really, like, I don't like seeing my friends being really upset. That whenever they want to talk about something, if something's bothering them, like their family or at school or other things, that I'll be there to talk to them and listen to them. 
and when they share their stories, I make personal connections of mine or say something like to make them feel better that I have a good understanding about what they're going through. And when I share my own stories, that leads to a, a strong connection between me and a friend of mine. Nice. All right, let's talk more about your school experience. So you had a special education resource classroom that you went to for math and English in elementary school. Yes. And did you have the same thing in high school? This time, it, yes, but it was different. So instead of like having special classrooms for those particular subjects, I had access to the academic resource okay. room, which was, which was run by the academic resource department in my high school. Basically, if you ever need to have to do a test or assignment or final exam or quiz anytime you don't want to do in your classroom, you could do it at the academic resource room. And from there, they were able to give you accommodations based on your IEP. So the accommodations, which was like having a memory aid, which has to be approved by your teacher, extra time for tests and quizzes and final exams, clarification, like if you're unsure of, any, of a particular question or you don't understand what that word means, that the, that the teacher is there to explain to you, and the use of electronic format, like if you want to type up your answers or you want to use a software to really read the question for you, type it up and look, check do spelling and grammar, you could use the, you could write the test in electronic format. So are those accommodations that you used? Yes, yeah. I use them. And like for electronic format, I mostly use it for my English exams and tests since you have to write reports, paragraphs, articles, essays and such. Okay. And how did you know that those accommodations were going to be helpful for you? I learned about that through my grade 9 learning strategies class, how my academic resource teacher who taught the course, she told us about those accommodations are available for you as a student with IEP in high school. And at the same time, they, they wanted me to attend the IPRC meeting, so I was able to know what will I have in grade 9, then later on in grade 10, 11, and 12, that my, my academic resource teacher is there, my VP, the principal, and my mom who came for the meeting. They only asked one parent so my mom came that instead of them deciding of what they want me what I want to do like during my four years they they gave me a say of what I want to do nice so you got to participate in your IEP meeting yes it was only in grade 9 that because I was able because it's the same accommodations I had in grade 9 I used the same thing no changes from grade 10 grade 11 grade 12 so when I told them that I want this I want to use the same accommodations no changes, I don't need to have that, I need that, et cetera, so. Yeah. And did you get a say on any of your goals for your IEP? Yes. Yeah. So for my goals, like I told, originally I wanted to go, since I was doing applied level courses in high school from grade nine to 10, and I was able to do well, like I was thinking of sticking to going to college, like going to Sheridan College for business after high school, but since I was able to do well in my applied level courses, I decided to switch into the university level courses which is basically going to apply level to academic level, which is on grade 9 to 10. But in grade 11 to 12, apply turns to college level, academic turns to university level courses. So during my final two years of high school, I took university level preparation and mixed level, which is college and university preparation courses. So I was able to go into the university route, which led me to my number one choice being at the University of Guelph Humber. Nice. So do you, do you find that any of the accommodations that you practiced using all through high school that you were able to continue to use any of those in university? Yes, like the mem like memory aids, extra time, clarification was only in high school, so I was able to use that in university, but I was able to use the electronic format, basically using the computer for my test assignment, test and final exams and midterms. So all those accommodations I had in high school continued to the university level at the University of Guelph Humber with the support of Humber College's Student Wellness and Accessibility Center. So from there, I must have an updated, updated assessment through the, psych, through the school board psychologist, like any psychologist that's supported by the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board. Okay. And from, they had to have an updated accommodation, which, was, which I did before I entered my first year university. And thankfully, that updated assessment was able to cover for my four years at university. And how did you know that you needed that? Like when I was, when I was entering university, they told me that if you want to have those accommodations, they need an updated assessment. 
and through that assessment, they were able to determine what I need. So um. from that assessment, I was able to get double the time. So for example, if I have two hours to write an exam, I'll have up to four hours. I can use a memory aid, which again has to be approved by my professor at uh, use of the electronic format using the computer. And there's another option of having a separate room, like a private room to write your test, which, pers which I'm, in my opinion, they offered to me, but I said I don't need it. Okay. Wow. So what were the transitions like? How was your transition from elementary school to high school? Was that scary at all? At the start, it was a bit scary, but thankfully I had an, I have an older brother who went, who went to the same high school as me. Another thing that helped me was the Get Ready program, which is an extra transition program for future grade 9 students to help them prepare for high school before they attend their high school orientation. So thanks to that program, I was able to know my way into the, to the high school, basically knowing which classrooms are, got to know my fellow students, which is basically the class of 20, the John Cabot Catholic Secondary School class of 2015, and some of the teachers who I'll see throughout my four years. And you were saying that when you were in high school, then you were a volunteer in that program, right? Yes, that's yeah. right. Can you tell me some of the ways that your teachers helped with your self-determination and self-advocacy skills? Yes, it also, in my high school years, my academic resource teachers has encouraged me like, to attend my, my IEP meetings, too, so I'll have a say of what my goals are, what accommodations I have, and they always encourage me like, to ask for help when I need. Like, instead of them telling me what to do, they will have to tell me, if you need help, if you need support, it, you would have to tell those you have to tell that teacher for help. Yeah. And they would and a lot of my teachers, including my academic research teachers, had encouraged me to get involved in my high school community, which really benefited me when I was able to get involved. So what are some of the things you were involved in? To be honest, a lot of things. Like sometimes I couldn't even remember all of them. But <laughs> some of the most some of my favorites were like the announcements team, which is called the Voice of Cabot, the Student Faith Ambassadors Chaplaincy team yearbook committee, student council, um, green team, the Me To We Cabot Cares Club, which is wow. almost like the social justice club, the chess club we had, which uh, was part of since grade 10, and one re which one team, which was like my number one favorite, was being in the Dufferin Peel Catholic Church School Board Student Voice Council when I was the student voice representative of my high school in my grade 12 years. So cool. So in the yearbook, you were like in every single club picture. Yeah, something like, yeah, from grade <laughs> nine, starting from grade nine to grade 12, that there was one occasion like in the grade 12 class photo, which was my year, where they had yeah. like those titles, like most likely, most likely to succeed, best smile, stuff like that. Yeah. Like apparently I was voted most likely to be the next Gandhi. <laughs> it's just because Gandhi, he made a huge difference to, to India, like how, they see me as a student who made a huge difference to the school community. In what ways did you make a huge difference? It all started when I was in grade 10, how, well before grade 10, in grade 9, our school participated in a charity series day where you donate $2 and you wear wacky and wild clothes to support kids who cannot talk or hear. So during my summer break after grade 9, my mom told me that since I've been volunteering with Autism Ontario since grade 8, helping families with children with autism in the Peel region for different events, she told me, why not do a, a charity series a day event for, for autism since I have that disorder? So in my grade, in grade 10, I told my principal about this idea of having a $2 civvies day and we told students to donate $2 and wear red, blue, yellow, and light blue, which are the four colors of the Autism Awareness Ribbon. So you did the autism, you brought more autism awareness to your high school. Yes. And did you do any other autism awareness events? In grade 10, it was the Charity Civvies Day. And yeah. in grade 11, we brought the Charity Civvies Day and we introduced the World Autism Awareness Day Raise the Flag campaign. So you you have quite the leadership skills. It was it was thanks. You could say that, but it was most of the support from my fellow students and teachers yeah. and the friends I made outside of high school council, which was part of in grade twelve, as a student voice representative a Cabot. How I was able I introduced this event I did in my high school to different to different student voice representatives, and I believe five high schools were interested in it, that they registered for the race to fly campaign 
did their own did their own charity event and sometimes got involved in the t-shirt campaign I did. So instead of my high school getting the t-shirts, other schools got them as well. Wow. So do you think that your teachers did anything to help you with developing your leadership skills? Yes. Yeah. My chaplain who my chaplain who I met from grade 10 then to grade 12, she she got me involved with the student faith ambassador chaplaincy team as she was the main lead supervisor or the lead of the of the team and she got me gave me the opportunity to volunteer for different readings at the school masses which is basically doing the readings from the bible or doing prayers of the faithful in front of almost the entire school for many masses which I did a couple of times wow so that's how you started into your leadership role yes then in grade 11 my chaplain selected me to go on this amazing retreat known as the Salesian Catholic Leadership Retreat. Wow, very lucky. You've had a lot of great opportunities throughout high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it wasn't for the support from teachers or my involvement during John Cabot, I wouldn't be able to get those opportunities in the first place. Yeah, so any teachers really stand out to you? A lot of teachers started with my academic resource teachers who has been with me throughout my four years of high school who taught the learning strategies course, who was there at the academic resource room or wherever I'm having some issues at school, I would talk to them or anything about accommodations or tests, I would, they were there to help me. Yeah. I had my VP, who, I, who was my VP since from grade nine to grade 12, who's right now going to become principal at a different high school. Oh. So when I graduated high school, he also transferred to a, another high school, which I kind of feel like he graduated with us. Yeah. So he played a huge role how he was always there for me whenever I needed I need to talk or we're having problems. And he was the one who advised, who suggested me to become the student voice representative of my high school in my grade 12 year. Oh, cool. Then I had my principal who was really supportive of all the initiatives I've done. The Autism Civics Day, which I did through my three years. The floor hockey buyout, which I did for to support the Typhoon High End in the Philippines. Whoa. And the Candy Drive, which I did with the Chaplaincy team. Wow. So I had my principal, I had my chaplain from the Student Faith yep. Ambassadors, who gave me the opportunity to do the readings and from the Salesian Retreat and selected me to receive the provincial award called the Catholic Education Foundation of Ontario Catholic Student Award, representing Cabot. Wow. So my chaplain, then my all my teachers, but yeah. some of the some of the teachers who really made a huge impact was my grade nine geography teacher, who was my very first teacher at high school, which my brother had for grade in history and my grade 11 religion teacher, who my brother also had for religion in grade 11, who yeah. where I made such a huge, strong friendship with her. How we had so many things in common, how we all handled through things, we all liked those certain things, how we always see each other and say hi and talk to each other during yeah. our time in high school. Even though I never had her, I didn't have her as a teacher in grade 12. What message would you want to give teachers who are teaching self-determination and self-advocacy skills to students with autism so that they may be able to come out of high school with having so many opportunities like you've had? The first thing I want to tell teachers is to never underestimate your student with autism. Just because they have autism or have a certain disability or disorder doesn't mean they won't have the capabilities and giving them opportunities and support them will play a huge role in their life. Even though if their support is a huge support or a tiny bit of support, it could play a huge role. And if they're able to do something small like right now, it could grow to something big later on in the future. And also another thing I want to mention that don't give modified tests or quizzes to the student because it'll just make things a lot easier for them. Instead of giving them modified work, like tests for assignments, give them accommodations like what I had. Like they'll be doing the, get them to have the same tests, assignments, like the same difficulty as other students, but give them accommodations like memory aids, extra time, use of the electronic format, clarification, or use a private room if they have. Like give those accommodations and if they're able to do well with those accommodations, like let them use them in their four years because personally, those accommodations helped me a, a lot. And I feel like if students could do well with accommodations, they'd be able to do well now and sometimes in the future that they're able to do well without accommodations. Like, you'll never know that 
accommodations could help them now and in the future. Yeah. Anything else? And another thing is, take and another thing I want to tell teachers is, even though that you're there to help students, take some extra time or take the trouble to help the students, push the students, or encourage the students to do really well because that extra time you may put for 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 the student could play a huge role in their life as a student. For sure. So you mentioned about how. Um, family and teachers and peers and all of that is very very important and having support from all of those do you think that or did you have the experience where your teachers helped to connect you with peers so that you had some peer support yes when i was in elementary school i got really close with few students so my teachers allowed me to sit with students who i knew who became good friends of mine that after i became comfortable with that small group of students they get, the teacher told me that they sh I should meet with other students in my, in my elementary school. So from a smaller group, I was able to go from a bigger group of students. Then in high school, it expanded from a, hu from a huge amount of students who later became my really good friends. And for speaking of friends, it's always important to have those positive friends around you. Right. Well, thank you so much. You shared so many great insights today. No problem. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.